bugs were actually very common in the U.S. before World War II, but pesticide use in the 40s and 50s seemed to pretty much defeat this tiny enemy. Pretty much, because now they're back. And you've got a lot of questions about them. We've assembled a panel of our best experts here at The Early Show to answer all of your bed bug questions. You've been calling them in, emailing, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, people in the crowd. You have questions. We're going to answer them this morning. To help us do that, CBS News Business and Economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis, medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton, and also our veterinary correspondent, <laughs> among a few other talents, Dr. Debbie Turner-Bell. So first question that we're getting, I want, to, I want to direct to you, Jen, which came to us via Twitter. A viewer tweets, a bed bug bite. How do I know? How is it different looking from a mosquito bite? Basically, how do you know that it's a bed bug bite? Very good question, a very hard one to answer because it can be very difficult to distinguish a bed bug from a mosquito bite, let's say, from a pimple. Even dermatologists can have a hard time. But there are a couple of little generalizations that you can tend to look for. Number one, a bed bug doesn't tend to give that swelling and pink, diffuse ring around the bite like a mosquito bite does when it gets swollen and starts to itch right away. There may be a little scab in the middle of a bed, a bed bug bite where you don't usually see that with other types of bites, mm -hmm. especially mosquito bites. And sometimes bed bug bites can cluster around each other. And believe it or not, that's referred to as breakfast, lunch, mm. and dinner. Oh, they've got a little, they've got all their meals in one <laughs> that's place. That's right. Um, depending on how the bed bug in your bed is feeding, whether it's been interrupted in the course of its meals, um, they can cluster around each other. And again, based on the skin color of the individual, darker skinned people might be much more difficult right. to tell. Okay, if you're fair, it's easier to see. We also have a question from a viewer in LA who sent this in. Do they transmit disease? And if they do, how do they transmit any diseases that uh, I might be able to get if I get bit by bed bugs in a hotel somewhere? That one's all you, Dr. Ashton. Oh, Ashton. boy. And you know what? They, they do carry about 24 pathogens, but the good news is there is no known documentation or proof that they can pass along diseases in the same way that, let's say, mosquitoes okay. or ticks can. However, they can get secondarily infected in some cases, and so that can cause a, a slight problem. Still but need to be aware. You're not going to get hepatitis or HIV That's from a good bed news. bug. Thank goodness. Debbie, this one comes to us via Facebook. Someone writing in to ask if dogs can actually detect the presence of bed bugs. Now, that's actually a really good question because actually bed bugs do secrete an oily odiferous or smelly substance and if there is such if there is a large enough infestation we as humans can smell them it's apparently it's a very sweet fruity smile, smell but it's also why dogs have been recently used very effectively to detect bed bugs because they do have this oily substance the dogs can key in on it detect it and they've been very effective with helping exterminators find the infestation but if they're there helping to find them or if they're anywhere near a bed bug be it uh, be it on an infected bed near a dog who's been infected can they catch them like fleas absolutely bed bugs are uh, blood feeders. They, they want a warm-blooded mammal. They prefer human beings for whatever reason, but if a human being is not available, they'll take whatever is available. They typically will feed from mice or from birds uh, more than uh, dogs, but if you have a bed bug infestation and you have a dog that, that sleeps in your bed with you, uh, then the, the bed bugs that can infest the dog. I love, by the way, I don't know if you can see Jen's face during all this, but, but Jennifer Ashton is going <laughs> oh, during this entire segment. Come on, you're a great. doctor, Bucka. Hal, Hal is here. Hal is lucky because he's here on Bed Bug Day. Hal's joining us from Radnor, Ohio. He's out on the plaza this morning with his question. Hal, good morning. Good morning. What's uh, your my, question? My, my question is the economic impact of the bed bug on the normal size uh, family's home mm. and, uh, you know, what some of those costs might be and the time period that, you know, you would have to even stay out of your home. And that's, that's one for you, Rebecca, because it can be a long Fairly expensive process to get rid of them. It can be, and it can be a very substantial, significant sum of money that you'll pay. The average family pays upwards of $5,000 just to get rid of bed bugs. Wow. And that really has to do with all of the different things you have to go through to exterminate and get rid of the problem, beginning with finding the problem. First off, you're going to call that exterminator. You're going to have them come take a look in your house and try and find out where the problem exists. Sometimes they'll do it for free, but they'll do the look around for free because they hope to gain your business in the extermination part. Then there's the bed, uh, bed bug sniffing dogs. They'll come out and do it. But it really does add up. And all of these services many times have to be done more than one right, time. Because there's a cleaning. And then you also have to get rid of and replace a lot of things like your mattress or upholstered exactly. furniture. We have a question um, also for you, Rebecca, via Skype. Hi. Does homeowner's insurance cover a bed bug infestation? And Especially if not, with 
Does insurance cover it? Especially with costs like that. Yeah, unfortunately, you are very much out of luck as far as homeowner's insurance goes because a lot of what this is considered by insurance standards is a maintenance problem, and you're supposed to exterminate bugs when they're in your house, rodents when you're in their house. Insurance doesn't cover that. What might cover some of the problem is your FSA, your flexible spending account. Jennifer, you probably know about this. A lot of people have these accounts. They'll put money aside before taxes, and you can use that money if you've been hurt by bed bugs. Interesting. When it comes to, I think this is actually a viewer question, so I'll let them ask the question. Do I tell my friends or employees that I have bed bugs? <laughs> I'm guessing the answer is embarrassing. It may seem embarrassing to people because yes. the, the, the old sort of idea was that this meant that you were unclean, that you'd been hanging out in sort of questionable areas, which is not the case. Right. And I think actually there, there is a precedent for this in a certain sense, Erica. It's if you have a communicable disease, for example, would you tell someone that was close to you that you were contagious or infected, let's say? And as parents know, the analogy here is also lice. When your children have lice, there is a social social stigma attached to it, and it can be embarrassing because it implies uh, a lack of cleanliness. We know that that is really a myth and a misconception, and you can have the cleanest house and have lice and bed bugs. So I think the answer to that Tell question them. is... Hopefully not at the same time. I was going right. to say, let's hope you don't have both. <laughs> right. That's and a bad girls, day. I hope none of you are sharing that information oh. with us this morning. Debbie, we have one last quick question for you. Okay. If they infiltrate office cubes, movie theaters, why are they called... Bed bugs. Uh -huh. that, that's a very good question. And because they are uh, blood feeders and they, they want to stay where the source is, we spend the one place we spend the most time in a 24 hour period is in our bed. So Speak they hang out we. around there. Yeah. <laughs> well, not us, that's right. But we're always on the go. So still the bed is the one place that we spend the most time. So they hang out there the so they can get the from. meal when you get in. Some great information. Thank you all for being here and for watching that video again. <laughs> Debbie Turner, Bell, Jed Ashton, Rebecca Jarvis. Thanks again. And thanks to all of you for bringing us your questions because you really helped to make that segment great and informative, so keep them coming.